Hello guys. First I want to apologize for the very weird face camera position, but I changed my environment and this is really the best I can have right now. And well, year is 2020 and this topic is going to be hot for the next few years. That's the reason I decided to compare again Simulcube versus Fanatec six months later. So let's dive in. Well, before I even start comparing both bases, the most important thing is to put your mindset in the proper state so you can make your own choice and what I mean by that. Well, you have to understand that every time you are before choice, subconsciously you already have made a choice and your brain is start playing games with you and is looking for confirmation and pick stuff only which helps that choice you already make and that is not good that's why you have to start this video from ground zero like you have to think like you don't know anything about both bases and the information you're gonna get from this video and the comments you're gonna read and then the research you're gonna make must help really make your perfect choice now, because that's going to be probably your first direct drive wheel, I will try to explain first my position from where I'm coming from and what is my experience. So I drive direct drive wheels the last three years and I have tested almost everything. But what I have really a good experience is the OSW1, the first Simulcube version and the direct drive wheel from Fanatec 2. And now in this video, I will compare the DD1 against the Simulcube 2. I know many people will say that this is not fair comparison, but I will explain to you my, my position, my point of view. For me, DD1 and DD2 are just absolutely the same wheels, just with the software, they keep down the DD1 to 20 Newton meters. And what you get extra with DD2 is the emergency button and the five years warranty. So that is the real difference. You get one extra emergency button and you get that five years warranty. The rest is absolutely the same because with the software, you will never gonna use the DD1 or DD2 with the highest torque maybe for fun, but not in real driving. That being said, I will never suggest to go for DD2 because if you have to choose between DD2 and Simulcube, for me, with my experience, Simulcube is the clear winner still, even if Fanate have worked really hard and I give them credits for the good job they done with the software and we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Next thing I want to explain is what I personally expect and what I want from any direct drive wheel. So if you have a real world racing experience, you know that when you drive on slicks and the slicks are melted and you gain the proper speed, you are like not in Kansas anymore. I mean, your normal driving style have nothing to do with uh, the racing driving style and you just try to balance the amount of grip with the weight transfer and stuff like this and everything is about proper time reaction and that being said for me the most important is the fast connection between me and the sim and that's because the slightest delay you're gonna have is going to conflict my inputs with the actual physics with what is going on with the sim and that is the biggest problem in sim racing that difference make things feels unrealistic and weird and that leads me to my next point which is the settings and i really try to use as less as possible filter settings because every filter you add to the software that really slow the connection between you and the sim and you start losing the advantages of the direct drive wheel and that fast connection 
after my first video six months ago with this comparison many things happened like there was many people who already had fanatec and they return it back or sell it i don't know and they join simucube and every single one of them confirm that it wasn't just placebo effect into my head it was a real difference and that lead to some point where thomas yak and maya contact me and ask me for the conditions i test both wheels and i explained to him that i feel difference between speed and connection he told me that both bases have absolutely the same speed so my immediate suggestion was can you check if that's the case after the filters so yeah credit to thomas really that they really want to improve their products and to be honest with the new the latest software from fanatec i can say there is a very big difference we can see that a little bit later in the video but yeah is the point where i want to give credits to fanatec that they try and they work on this now at this point i will be very clear that still six months later simucube is performance wise the best wheelbase ever but fanatec have closed the gap a lot so for simucube i have to say i used it the last six months really harsh and i didn't have a single problem with it i hope that continue and with fanatec i will show you i had few little problems and i guess they are probably the latest firmware's software versions which are not completely clean but now you're gonna tell me okay why you do that video well let me explain why i feel like now fanatec dd1 makes a lot of sense because if you think about you can take fanatec dd1 with complete wheel magnetic shifter amazing formula v2 wheel from fanatec for 1600 euro and with simucube you're gonna you're gonna get just the base for that amount of money and then you really have to spend a lot of money for for wheel and if you're gonna if you wanna go cheap it's not my suggestion because i have used 3d printed wheels in the beginning with the osw1 and they wasn't great for this use so it's very difficult for me every time somebody moved to simucube 2 and asked me for suggestions on wheels and every time i show wheels <laughs> every single one is over 700 euro and you go even over thousand which is quite expensive so that's why i, com I compare those both bases because one makes really good sense for the money what you're gonna get and one is really the best and if you are like me and you are willing to pay the last bit stupidest amount of money to take something which is a little bit better well don't think about it and just go for simucube but if you are somebody who really care about the money let me tell you this when i test those both bases i can clearly feel and see the difference but what i realized with the time putting different people to test those wheels I realized that people who don't have any experience they really cannot feel any different really they just don't understand but once you reach that limit over that limit is always different so you have to think about it are you willing to spend almost double the cash to take the best or you want to save some money and still have something very nice because look whatever direct drive wheel you're gonna get coming from those lower level wheels 
with any direct drive wheel you're gonna be absolutely blast you have to trust me on this let me explain to you now what are the improvements the last six months Fanatec DD wheels get from the new firmwares well the first two weeks when I start using the DD2 this wheel really makes me scared on some cases this wheel were trying to go really crazy and broke my fingers and especially on very low speed now this have been improved like 100% that you can see on that video that the wheel is is going really smooth the next thing is with the new firmware as I suggest to Thomas they really make it possible to make the wheel absolutely fast one to one with the sim but in the cost of the smoothness and you can you can set now both wheels Simucube and uh, Fanatec to be equal speed but with that equal speed you will feel a lot of difference between both wheels in smoothness and I guess that granity guys because they are already like three years and they coming from robotics and their software department must be really really good and Fanatec still struggle with that the Fanatec with the fastest settings is a little bit grainy noisy and clicky you start feeling like you are driving something like how to explain that something like a belt wheel i mean like the smoothness from changing direction is not that nice but you start feeling really connected with the sim but when you use those fast settings that's what happened to me last uh, three weeks of testing happened four times and i hope this is because of the new software or something and it's not anything wrong with the wheel but i think the wheel is nice so when that happened the wheel don't respond at all and even the button behind you cannot reset i have to take the wheel from the socket and turn it down and restart it but you know that is quite bad because if you are in a racing situation and that happens to you your race is pretty much done even even if you lose the feedback you can still continue and even finish fast sometime last sometimes is important but with this problem you are completely out you have to you have to restart the wheel entirely and i hope they're gonna fix this with some next firmwares now i'm very very happy because when we talked with thomas and he told me they have the same speed i wasn't really sure but he proved me wrong with uh, those new firmwares just now they really have to work and find how they can make the wheel smooth in those fast settings which will be awesome that being said i can see that fanatec really improved the product and i can really see some light in the in the tunnel did they catch up with simucube well not really at this point but some six months ago i was sure it's not possible now after those three weeks with the new firmwares i can see that is it possible it's really possible just they need to find a way and another problem we know with fanatec is that quick release problem and i really feel like fanatec uh, quality control is very low because out of eight different wheels and one hub i use over the years 
three of them had this problem and the other five was absolutely sturdy and fine and let's see for example you know those quick releases i have two of them i have one here attached to this wheel and they are really from high-end companies and cost 170 pounds each and both of them had problem one on rotation one on up and down and i contact both companies and explain the problem i had and they told me it's not how it's supposed to be so they asked me if i want to replace the product or i want my money back and at the time i really didn't need them anymore so i just asked for my money back but they told me they don't want those products back because they cannot do anything and will be just extra cost for shipping so i keep them here this one i have a touch here on the wheel i stick it together so it's not any more quick release it's just acting like spacer there but what i mean is fanatec knows very well as those company knows very well that this is not how it's supposed to be and it is down to quality production and i don't know how lucky or unlucky i was with my case having like three out of eight wasn't really good so yeah will be good if fanatec at some point really produce one very sturdy quick release and just put it on the website so people who cannot live with that wiggle just buy it it will be nice but yeah anyway so that's about fanatec i feel like you get the idea for for fanatec now let's talk a little bit for simocube simocube is still the benchmark and is the best overall performance wise base ever produced on the market for the money at least because many years ago i tested the lens and motor and i feel like nothing compared to this motor <laughs> but simocube closed that gap with a lot simple motor which is nice and to be honest there is nothing bad i can say about simocube except that when you go for simocube then you have really to spend some extra cash for some wheel but that is not actually a simocube problem because simocube never promised to bring us wheels they bring just base and they are not responsible for that or for the prices we have to pay for aftermarket wheels now yeah simocube is my favorite and there is many people contact me privately or we talk about in forums and more than 20 people confirm that moving from fanatec to simocube it was some great different nobody became faster but everybody said the smoothness of the wheel is next level so yeah that's about simocube simocube is still the benchmark well at the end of the day it's gonna be your decision you don't have to take my personal opinion or anybody else personal opinion you have to make your own choice and it's down to simocube is the better one but you are going to spend a little bit more or maybe a lot more for a wheel and if you go for dd2 route you have to know that with dd2 you just take that emergency button and five years warranty extra otherwise it's absolutely the same wheel just you know down to 20 newton meters but electronics and motor everything is the same just from the software they put it down to 20 and if for you that makes sense and you really need those five years warranty for your own 
I am not going to judge you is is your safety and if you wanna go for DD1 well you really can save some cash with DD1 you can get some extra will or even if you go for DD1 you can take like two nice wheels for the DD1 instead of Simucube and one wheel that's also a case so it will be up to you what you are willing to spend and what you really want because at the end of the day as I told you all the direct drive wheels are absolutely awesome every single one I tested is awesome just some are better better than other that's all and again don't be fanboy and be careful with the comments because you have to make difference which comments are really you know from their heart and which are just you know fanboy boy based comments and yeah i hope that helps you for your next decision and see you in the next one.